Do you remember your sex education? Was it helpful to you? Was it filled with scientific information rather than real, practical advice? I'm Degree Weight, and this is The Real Sex Education. Every other week, I'll be posing sex questions, busting sex myths, and opening up our mailbox to answer your relationship conundrums. But in order to do this, I need an expert. A sexpert, if you will. But the only sex and relationship therapist I know is my mum. Hello, mum. Hello, Diggs. Hello and welcome to The Real Sex Education. I'm Diggy Waite and thinking about today's topic, I'm unfortunately joined, as always, by accredited sex and relationship therapist Kate Campbell. Hello, mum. Hello, Diggs. I was surprised when you said that you wanted to talk to me about this on the podcast because this was actually your idea. Was it? <laughs> you said the other day, you were like, Diggs, we need to talk about anal on the podcast. And I was like, oh, okay. It's very popular. We do, we do indeed. So, okay, let's get straight into it then, uh, which you shouldn't do with anal. Do not dive straight in, but we'll get onto that no, later. No, don't dive in. What is anal sex? Well, it's all kinds of sex that involve the anal area and the rectum. Mm. So it could be licking. Um, what or it they could call be that? What's the word for that? Rimming. Rimming. But there's also a word for it. Something rimming. lingus. Not cunnilingus. Something lingus. Oh, is it? Ana- oh, anilingus. Of obviously. course. There you go. Come on. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's also, and also sort of things you can do with your fingers. Yeah. And also things you can do with toys, sex toys, and also yeah. you can put your penis in there as well. There you go. And who has anal sex? Well, lots of people do. So gay couples, um, yeah. men who have sex with men, yeah. straight couples, yeah. women with men, women penetrate men as well with yeah, a pegging. strap on, and women penetrate women with a strap on. Yeah. So, form and of sometimes, I mean, sometimes people use a strap on anyway, just for fun. Mm. Sometimes a vibrating strap on or something like that over their penis. So there's that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another, yeah. Or, or some people don't think their penis is big enough, or they just want to have an absolutely ginormous penis. They will put that peg over their penis um, and stuff like that. So yeah. So basically, what we're trying to say is also people on their own will just like you know they can use oh, yeah. and toys so and that sort so of stuff. Like sex. People, yeah, exactly. People use so it as well. Just I, the reason I ask that question is because I think obviously people often assume that the only people that have anal are gay men or straight couples and again it's when the man is penetrating the woman but people are forgetting about pegging where you can reverse the roles pegging for lesbian couples but also people are forgetting about sides not all gay men have anal sex there are gay men out there who don't like anal sex and don't have anal sex and it's very important to remember that as well um why why do people have anal sex well, some people really like it. Some men like it because sometimes the rectum's tighter than the vagina, particularly after women have had children. So sometimes they like that. Um, mm. A lot of receptive partners, really uh, met receptive men, really enjoy having um, the, their their prostate stimulated. That mm. can be very nice, apparently. Yeah, well, lots apparently people... you can orgasm from that. Yes, you absolutely can. Yeah. There you go, yeah. So lots of people do that. Um, and some people like that feeling of snugness and closeness, and that goes for men and women, like that feeling of snugness and closeness. They feel particularly close when they're doing something like that. Mm. Sometimes people want to do it with their partner because their partner isn't a virgin, so they want to sort of take their anal virginity. Wow. Um, which, you know, is a bit... Mm, Whoa, I haven't really? heard of that. Oh, wow. That, oh, yeah, that's really, really popular. And mm. the thing about that is that, um, you know, again, it's a sort of bit of a power thing. Um, so yeah. there is sometimes a bit of a power element in that. So there are all sorts of reasons. I've heard of that, but in the sense of people are virgins and thus they don't want to have penis and vagina sex. So they'll have mm. anal instead to be like, well, we're still virgins because we've had anal sex. Yeah, I've heard of that, nonsense, way, which that's I think silly. is, is um, mad, but, but there you go. Yeah, it's mad. Um, but also there are people who say, oh, you know, let me let me do this and then I'll take your anal virginity mm. and then, you know, that'll bring us closer. Mm. But essentially, you know, like uh, all sorts of people can derive some sort of pleasure out of it, either whether it's, you know, physical or just like the mental side of it. It's like fun and taboo and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, the taboo, I mean, there's a lot written about it at the moment and there's and there's a lot of it in porn. So mm. I think that's attractive people. And it, it's very much normalised at the moment. So people feel there's something wrong with them if they don't like it. Some people. Yes. So yeah. that's not so great. Well, that's another thing I've written here is the expectation. I feel like anal uh, comes along with sort of sex positivity and sort of like the the sort of more recently people feeling that they have to be 
kinky if they're not kinky they're boring in the bedroom and that sort of thing and this is one of the like first things you can do and like it's like you know after you've had quote unquote normal you know regular penis vagina sex it's like well now the next step is obviously anal and i think people feel under pressure and expectation to do it so that's another reason why but you don't have to do anything you don't want to do yeah but they shouldn't if they feel under pressure and what you absolutely shouldn't do is get drunk and think oh let's give this a go Mm, because exactly. that doesn't usually work very well. Because yeah. really and truly, you need to prepare the anal area. And I, I'd say for the first few times you do this, use lubricant and use just a, a finger, wear a finger yeah. stool or a... Um, finger stool? Yeah, a finger stool. Or else you can is wear... Is that like a thimble? What is that? It's like, a, it's like a latex thing that goes over your finger. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that would be to improve... Um, Hygiene. <laughs> Hygiene, right. Why? Yeah. And also yeah. you can use um, dental dams as well. And yeah, there are now lucas. knickers. There are some great knickers which are great for um, for rimming mm. or, or finger play and also, you know, for clitoral stimulation as well if you don't want to, if you're worried about STIs and you don't want to get too close. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, wow, so, entire so, knickers. Entire knickers. And they're very pretty apparently. Really? I just imagine it's sort of like wearing a condom. Yeah, I mean, they've got latex ones and then they've got some that aren't latex in case somebody's allergic. But nice. you can you can, you can can get those as well now. And that's nicer than a dental dam, really, because yeah. they're a bit fiddly and awkward. And... Well, and dental dams are, just remind people that listening what they are, if they don't they're, know. They're sort of squares of rubber. Yeah, so it's sort of... Put over the area. Yeah. It's like a condom, but for oral sex, sort of. Oh, I had root canal treatment and they put one right over my entire face. A dental dam? Well, it's a dental dam. That's where they come from originally. Oh, you're kidding me. That's a, that's y- yeah. horrifying. Was they put this, it right over my Was this on the NHS face. or did you go private? Because this no, sounds like a private. very... private. Yeah, well, they, that's what I'm saying. And they, that's, I think you've got the wrong place. Oh, it was awful. It was truly, truly awful. And he, he put little holes in for eyes. And it was, it was like a gimp mask. Oh, it was awful. It oh, was my God, black. Mum, this wasn't... I didn't think this was dental surgery. I think this was... Um, you went to a sex party, didn't you? No, I didn't. It was... It, I definitely came out with a hurty tooth. Yeah, again, you went to a sex party, didn't you? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> but it... But it. But yeah, so they are... So they were originally yeah. just for dental use. Well, this is a good, because I think this is important to talk about. I was going to do a little of a how-to, how to do it, because... Uh, and you mentioned something really important there, two things. Start small, I think, essentially is. So like you mm. say, of fingers. And a lot of people say, start start on your own. If you really want to do this, well, see for yourself if you want to do it. You know, mm. use your own fingers. See what it feels See what it feels like. See how, how, how you like it. Lots of lubricant to start with, like you said. And also, you mentioned condoms and dental dams there. When you're dealing with this area, you still need to be safe. STDs can still be passed this way. And Absolutely. also, it's actually probably easier. I don't know, you might, you might be able to speak better, man. But with condoms and stuff, it can actually get the lube on those actually a lot easier. And it'll help with the whole lack of friction sort of thing i mean a lot of people walk around with a butt plug all day if they're planning to have anal sex later yeah to kind of yeah. stretch the area mm. they do that's they a, do that and if you are using idea. if you are going to put inside any kind of a vibrator or anything like that it needs to have a, a, a flared big, base wide flared base yes yes so that because it can zoom up inside and get lost yes i have uh he won't mind me saying this i have a doctor friend who says he has to fish out a couple of those a year in the hospital because uh, that's what happens. I mean, some people do love it. When I was nursing, I was that. I remember one guy. You couldn't give him anything. He put whatever he had. He he'd insert it. And there was one time when I gave him his supper, and then went back about two minutes later and said, "Where's the salt and pepper pots?" Mum, mum, what the. F- where did you work? Where was this? Oh, I better not tell you. It was a long, long, long <laughs> but time you, this ago. Was in a hospital, was it? It was in a hospital. But yeah. you worked in the hospital. Oh my goodness! I mean, gracious it was me. really worrying, and I was in a lot of trouble for letting him do it. <laughs> it was short and salt and pepper show. and they think, "Oh God, now we have to get them out." And it was just slow. Oh my word! Yeah. Where, what what sort of life have you led? What sort of life has that man led? Wow! And when you think of people in those situations, you sort of think of suicide watch. You can't get them anything they can kill themselves with. You got with that guy. You've got to think: <laughs> is there anything you put up his bum? We've got to have him on bum watch. Well, they'd already they already had special cutlery for him. What? How? What? With flared bases? <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't. That was like paper. 
Yeah. So, oh my. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can't really. It's hard to get purchased. I'm sure he'd feel well, fine. Well, it's not just purchased, but if it's in there, it would sort of start to break down. It's not going to be as as. It's not going to be like sticking a knife in or something like that. Can you this imagine? This is insane. I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's fun. Um, speaking of your lunch and dinner and salt and pepper, a lot of people think about with this, they want to clean the area, which is good. You should want to clean it. Like you know, obviously, best practice would be you know shower and stuff beforehand. You know, maybe have a light lunch. But a lot of people go for douches or enemas. Yes. But actually, the I believe that you're not really supposed to use those because it actually might end up well, firstly irritate the cells inside, but it dries out. It actually dries out. It can dry it out. Yeah, your anus. Yeah. 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 Especially if you use anything that's sort of detergenty. But mm. the other thing is um, that um, some people really enjoy an enema and some people enjoy giving an enema. So this can be some bum play ah, that people okay, yeah. enjoy. So giving an enema prior to sex can be can enhance sex for some people. They Interesting. like it. Interesting. Oh, right. Okay. So it's sort of like a cleaning kink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Fair enough. I just want to make sure we hit all these points. And I suppose, uh, well, I mean, yeah, we, we we mentioned all of them, except for, I guess, the most important of all, which probably we should have mentioned first, is consent. And that is firstly within yourself and and your partner. But you know, do you actually want to be doing this? Is the you know the expectation we talked about before? Do you actually want to be doing this? And are you enjoying yourself? Remember, with consent, you can stop at any time. There's a lot of people who think they want to do it because mm. they've seen it on, in porn and they like the look of it, or because their friends have told them about it and said it was great. And there are a lot of people who don't want to do it but do it because they think people will think they're not good enough if they don't do it. They think it's expensive of them. So mm. some people do it for that reason. If you have or ever had had hemorrhoids, mm. don't do it. Absolutely really? do not do it. Yeah. So tell people what hemorrhoids are. Hemorrhoids are sort of varicose veins um, mm. around the anal opening. And they can become, I mean, if you're constipated or something, they can be very irritated. They become they inflamed, can bleed right? and they can fall out. Yeah. They can fall out? Yeah. Veins can fall out. Yeah, these things what? can. They can. They they often look like a bunch of of grapes, and they will and they will pop out of your bottom, wow. and sit outside, and then you have to sort of lubricate and put them back in again. And the NHS isn't so keen on surgery for this sort of thing these mm. days. It used to be used to yeah. do it quite a lot, but there are pessaries and things now which shrink them. But even if you shrunk them, I still would, I, I mean, it's only going to irritate them. You've got an area of your body which is not going to like this. So mm. just leave it alone, I would right, say. Right, don't, right. don't do it. Um, some people take drugs to make it easier to, so that they don't feel pain. That's really not a good idea because it never, never, never have anal sex if you're drunk or you've taken drugs because you may not feel pain and you can do a lot of, a lot of damage. One of the questions I want to ask is one of the questions from Google because a lot of people on Google are pretty worried about this sort of thing. And here's a question I've got for you, man. One of the most commonly asked anal questions on Google is, can hemorrhoids be passed through anal sex? No, but they. But what we've been saying already, they can be made painful. Mm. I mean, if you if you've if you've used your suppositories that are supposed to anaesthetize them and make them mm. shrink, mm. and you know, and you're eating a healthy diet with lots of fiber, which I know you love. I do. Um, you love a healthy diet. So, oh yeah, yeah. And Me and so, Weetabix, we're best mates. Yeah, if you're one of those prunes, if you're one of those mm. people, then then that should be you know you should be fairly comfortable. But but the minute you start poking around and sticking and sticking a penis uh, on these hemorrhoids, they're going mm. to get irritated. They're going to itch like mad and they're potentially going to bleed. So they're not to be messed with. I mean, some people do actually enjoy the sensation because sometimes the sort of pain associated with touching hemorrhoids is pleasant for some people and they do like it. But wow. I seriously, seriously wouldn't recommend it. I used to like having an ulcer in my mouth i used to sometimes enjoy that and i'd like play with it in my tongue i can't imagine that i know i don't get it and that was when i was a kid i used to love it and now if mm. i get an ulcer it's the worst thing in the world the idea of having hemorrhoids and being like ooh, bit of pain this feels Let's all give right that a little waggle yeah but listen <laughs> not gonna kink shame and the latest advice is that women shouldn't have anal sex at all Right. And why is that? Because their bodies are different. Um, so there was some recent research which suggested that people don't ask women why they have anal injuries very often. And they don't tell them that their problems are being caused by anal sex. And because they don't mention it, 
a lot of women go away thinking, oh, well, it can't be that because they didn't mention it. You mean doctors. But, so they, they come to a doctor with an issue. They come to a doctor. Yeah, yeah. And then the doctor doesn't, doesn't go, oh, doesn't, doesn't ask about anal because it's just not on their sheet. Or well, they too... just don't like, they're embarrassed. But mm. the, the, what the doctors are saying now is if there's any pain or bleeding, you've got trauma. And you shouldn't have trauma. You shouldn't be doing anything that causes trauma to your body. You can make yourself permanently incontinent. And, are you, you know, who wants that? No, um, no. no and, I mean, it's because, it, and it's because the w- a woman's body and their anal area, actually, it has a different makeup to men's. That's why we're not saying no one should do anal. We're saying women are strongly advised not to. Women are at higher risk. Higher I mean, risk, right, right. They're, they're, they're at higher risk because they have thinner skin, for a start, right, right, right. they have a lot of hormones which affect that area as well and make mm. it particularly sensitive. And so it's probably wise to avoid if you if you can. I mean, if you love it, then you'll do it, I guess. But um, yeah. if you're bleeding or you're experiencing pain, something's not right. You shouldn't. Yeah. You should be practising this a lot, using loads and loads and loads of lube. And if you are going to insert something into the anus... You go very, very, very slowly and rest inside and leave a bit of time for the external anal sphincters to to note, to sort of become aware that you're there or Mm. that there's a penis there or a peg or whatever it is. And to just relax so mm. that, that you're not you're not causing damage. If you're pushing, forcing yourself against the anal sphincter, you'll cause damage. So you shouldn't be doing that. You should go in a little tiny bit, rest, little bit more rest, little bit more rest. Yeah. And the internal anal sphincter opens in an involuntary way. So that's that's a bit different. But you can tense up. Mm. Um, and the more it hurts, obviously, the more you're going to tense up and the more difficult it's going to be. Yeah, it sounds like bloody sports. It's a lot to do with breathing. I think obviously a lot of it is to what we've talked about before. You know, warm up the area, make sure it knows you're there. Use loads of lube. You know, you've used your fingers. Let's say you've moved up to a bigger toy, that sort of thing. But you need to be in yourself and your body as well, relaxed. So when you feel this happening, you're going to go <gasps> and tense up. You're going to take a sharp intake of breath, well, and you're going to feel your body, as if you know, you're going to poo. That's well, it, that's that, also a thing. But but yeah. you know, and what you need to what you need to try and do is relax yourself as well and try and keep, remember, breathing in mm. deeply and slowly. And also for that internal anal sphincter we talked about, a little hack that we talked about in our pegging episode with Zachary Zane was, I don't know, I mean, since I've, I've told people this and people don't, I felt like this worked, but if you sort of open your gullet, imagine you're going to like chug loads of water or something. That apparently opens your inner anal sphincter. Let's all try that. See, I feel like that's working, but I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going mad. But anyway, that's a little. But also, I wonder whether that's maybe the kind of thing where, if you're thinking about trying to do that when it's happening, it might be like a dock leaf because you're not really thinking about what's happening. You're now trying to focus and like you're centre your breathing and you're trying to relax to try and do and try and you know maybe that's what helps as well. But you mentioned something good in there, which I want to mention as well. It's going to feel like you're pooing, and I've, that is a classic. Especially mm. the first few times you're like, right, I feel like it feels like I'm pooing. Well, inevitably you're going to, aren't you? Because when yeah. the when the rectum is full of fecal matter, you're pooing normally. Yeah. Same feeling. When it's mm. filled, exactly. The, what I would say as well about this is if you are worried about pooing or anything like that, maybe this isn't for you. <laughs> because firstly, you know, if, if you're worried about it yourself, then maybe this isn't for you because you need to remember this is the area we're dealing with here. And similarly, if you're worried about what your partner's going to think, if your partner is the kind of partner who then goes, oh, what the hell? Your partner's a dick as well because <laughs> they, they because what are they talking about? Again, this is the area we're dealing with. So I suppose that's something that's important to note is that because of where we are, you might see some things or things might happen. And it's trying, about trying to mitigate it. But if it does, which is almost a certainty, then you just got to be cool with it. I mean, some people just, I mean, I think what we need to remember is that some people absolutely love it and some people absolutely hate it. And mm. you should not be coerced into doing something you don't want to do. Absolutely right. Absolutely, absolutely not. right. And yeah. if, you, if, you, if you start doing it because you think you want to do it and you change your mind, then stop. Absolutely. Do not continue because it, you know, it could have longer term consequences. Yeah, definitely. Also, don't wear a condom and then enter the vagina or go anywhere near it. Great point again. Um, and wash your hands before uh, and wash any sex toys that have been near the anus before you put them near the vagina because they can cause nasty infections. Mm. All right. One, one more question from Google. One of the top mm. commonly asked ones is, can you get pregnant from anal sex? 
Yes. What? Unfortunately. What are you talking well, about? That's only, not possible. Only if you don't protect the area. I mean, if you exit and there's sperm and it runs out and it runs round into the vagina, mm. then obviously, I mean, you, we wouldn't want you to do that anyway. Yeah, but it's ridiculously unlucky is what you're saying. It is very but it unlucky. Is possible. But it is possible. And it's also wow. possible. I mean, it's possible. I mean, don't forget, some people have a lot of pre-cum. And if they get it on their fingers and, you know, they could get it on their fingers before they start anal and they could, mm. you know, be touching the vagina then and then put on their condom, do their anal bits and pieces, and then say, oh, gosh, why are you pregnant? We only did that. Yeah, Um, yeah. So we only had anal sex, but but because they touched with their fingers, I mean, again, incredibly unlucky. Yeah. Um, but, the likelihood is so slim, but, right? But it's slim, but it can happen. And I think a lot of people will say that the the people saying, "Oh, you can get pregnant from anal," they're they're mostly sort of shaming because it's a small right. risk. Yeah. So that so a lot of people would say, "Oh, it's just shaming saying that." But you know, it's worth taking care. Apart from anything else, you shouldn't be putting anything near an anus, near a vagina afterwards. If it's been near an anus, don't put it near a vagina. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. Um, I'm glad that's over. Are you glad that's over? <laughs> I'm a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> your face has been a bit, bit of a picture. <laughs> I'm sure that's the sort of thing that people say, unfortunately, a lot of people probably say after anal. I mean, guys, if you think that we've got any of this wrong and you've discovered something different through your own anal play, then do let us know. We'll be fascinated. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Get in touch with us. We're at Real Sex Ed Pod on Instagram and Twitter or podcast at hatch.com. On the email, um, yeah, please do send us in. Like, yeah, let us know what you think about it. Or if we've missed anything out about that, we'll obviously rectify that in the future. Mm, that's close to rectum. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with your questions and more in part two of the podcast right after this. It's the mailbag. Thank you, queries. Two podcasts at hatch.com. It's the mailbag, St. Kate Queries, podcasts at hatch with two Hello there, I have a query for Kate. I would like to know when the real sex education mailbag starts. The real sex education mailbag starts right now. Thank you. Welcome back to part two of the Real Sex Education podcast, in which we answer the questions you sent in to us via our Instagram and Twitter account. We're at Real Sex Ed Pod or via our email with podcast at hatchet.com. If you have a question for us, I mean, which could be a personal conundrum for you or your partner or just anything about sex relationships you want to know, do send it our way and don't worry, we'll keep your anonymity safe unless you say otherwise. Mum, this question came in through our anonymous Google Docs question form, which you can find the link in our bio on our Instagram account for. And this person says, Hey guys, I've recently realised that I get a lot of validation from men and realistically it's affecting my self-esteem more than other things. My work, hobbies, friendships, etc. I date casually, but if the people I date aren't interested after a couple of dates, this affects my self-worth and mental well-being a huge amount. I love sex and would ideally like to keep dating, but want to know how to find a healthier balance. Thanks. Um, Thoughts? So it's really interesting, isn't it, how people sort of have casual sex and then are surprised when somebody doesn't see that as a relationship. And that this is not me shaming casual sex at all, because it's great when you know what you're doing, when you know what it is. But Mm. some people say... Okay, I'm really happy with a casual relationship, but then they're not really. And then what happens is they um, get upset when the other partner isn't as interested as they thought they would be. But I mean, it could be that your context, you're saying, oh, this is casual, has made them think, well, this person is never going to be interested in a relationship. So so it's just not on their radar, the idea of a relationship. Mm, And mm. that happens a lot. And there there are a lot of women at the moment who say, well, men have all this fun having casual sex. Why shouldn't we? And they sort of count the number of, of people they've had sex with and they think the more the merrier and that's great. But that's great so long as everybody knows where they stand. If you mm. then like somebody and want it to be more of a relationship relationship, you have to let them know that. Um, mm. And you have to let them know that things have changed. And I think that that's a problem. And then people, that some people get very intense and say, how could you treat me like this? And, you know, look, you're, you're doing this terrible thing to me again. You knew I had... Um, a difficult past. And that's often true. But they often say, I had, I've had, i had a difficult past, therefore I'm not interested in a relationship at the moment. 
Mm, so mm. so what's in someone's head and what's out there in the relationship are often two completely different things and you know if if you are if you are going around saying i'm having casual sex i'm choosing this then mm. why are you surprised when people treat you as if you're having casual sex yeah it's it's interesting we talked about this actually a couple of weeks ago with la 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 let me explain mm. on our modern dating episode and i wonder whether it's also the sort of landscape of dating at the moment where you know like people date casually and that then turns into you know something proper or it doesn't but the mm. problem is is when when you have these situationships they can just become a bit yeah like this where two people are, are looking for different things or they or it, or it depends mm. on different things she also makes another point which i think is really interesting that she definitely felt herself where she was like what was odd was i was dating casually and i would have said all that but then after a few dates i would have caught feelings or i'd be like actually i like this person they're all right and then want to pursue something or for some reason even though when they looked at it she said she said even though when i looked at them I don't even think they were that great, but just something about having gone on a few dates, I was like, no, I want a bit more. But actually, when she stepped back and looked at it, she looked at it, she was like, actually, they weren't that great. So mm. it's a, it's a, there's a lot of things going well, on there. Well, that's the I'm... hormones, isn't it? So if you see somebody right. regularly, then all the honeymoon hormones are going to kick in and you're mm. going to not see people's disadvantages. So if you've allowed yourself to just see mm. one person or mostly one person yeah then you then it's much more likely that you'll get all those hormones kicking in and they'll make you want that person whereas the other person might not be doing that they might be having lots of sex with different people or they might be very aware of the risk of 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 that happening and so controlling it yeah i think it's a, it's a great point i mean something that you said before i want to go back to um mm. about presenting yourself as if you're casually dating mm. how are you supposed to not date casually in this current climate mm. i went on a date a, f a few months ago and it felt very much like a job interview mm. uh, they were asking me questions funny enough one of the questions was what's your relationship like with your mother um genuinely <laughs> oh, like it was say? <laughs> well, I, well i said well you're not going to believe this <laughs> and then proceeded <laughs> to tell her about all that but she was like oh so you're quite close then and i was like yeah but the problem was that she, part of the reason she was asking these questions maybe i was giving too much away but she was her, one of her issues was because her ex had a very good relationship with their mother to the fact that like he couldn't go like longer than three days without seeing her for an extended period um and she was like it was a bit much you know it's nice they had a relationship well, that's quite but... right really i mean really you should check in every day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were being like that's quite right really this girl was right no no yeah i should check in more should i um but basically what i'm saying is because you know i kind of like it because it's kind of that's how it really should be is like mm. if you go on a date with someone it's, it's nice and, and chilled out and you like each other whereas how do you then go no this is a relationship i'm how do you present yourself in that way or how do you you know well, there are people who still feel that if you've had sex with somebody then it's become serious there are people mm. who still feel that way there yeah. are people who still feel that that if they say, I only want something serious, I don't want to mess around, that that's the rules. And that should be it, that's shouldn't it, That's fair enough, and that should yeah, be it. that should so be it, So it's yeah. not always the case. I mean, I think there's a, a bit of a fashion for sex before relationship at the moment, which is strange, isn't it? and I think you have to be honest about what's going on as soon as possible to mm. avoid being hurt. Because what people actually do is to get really intense and to blame the other person when actually they've been in their heads imagining that the other person likes them as much as they like that, that person. Mm. And you know, it might just be the wrong time. You know, yeah, quite you know, often right is. person, wrong time, or yeah. you know that sort of thing. I think this. I'm caught in a crap strain too with this one because, you know. I get a lot of validation from men. I date casually, but then after a few dates, it affects me. I wonder whether, again, I'm going to reference it again, that episode with La 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 Let Me Explain. Mm. You know, she said something similar. And then she was like, I had to go celibate for 18 months. And that really helped her. However, she even qualifies that, though, by saying that at the same time she started her blog and her Instagram mm. account, La 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 Let Me Explain. And so she was like, maybe I was getting validation from people through that so mm. i wonder whether it's really difficult because uh, you know you can say oh well just don't get your validation that way but the problem is is i completely get that that the pull of that and yeah, unless but it's not you replace real, it, it it's not it's not real i mean if it if you're in the early part of a relationship then it's all hormones and they could disappear and mm. um you know if it's not i mean if you're saying well i don't want it to be serious then what are you expecting but you're still getting validation the validation is real well, somebody saying i want to have sex with you 
That's but, the validation. But so many people feel, oh, all you want to do is have sex with me. Mm. You know, what about my mind? Yeah. What about my my intellect? Don't want to shag that as well. So there's all of that. Yeah. But then, so then what... Well, then what's the answer? What is the answer for this person? Mm. I love sex and would ideally like to keep dating, but I want but want to know how to find a healthier balance. Be honest. Be more honest. And and if somebody says something like, I'm not interested in a serious relationship, believe them. Mm. I think people should be self-validating. Ultimately, if you were self-validating and you thought, I'm great, and whatever this other person thinks of me, they're a fool if they don't mm. jump at the chance of a wonderful relationship with me because I'm wonderful, yeah. then everything would be fine. And you'd just be saying, oh, well, you're lost, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll just switch on the self-validation button and that would work. Do you know yeah, what I mean? But, I'm sorry, but, but I think why. I suck. I think I suck. So there's no way that I could do that. This is why they, when we, when we have sex therapy, we stop couples from talking to one another and make them take care mm. of themselves and think, and think about what is making them uncomfortable during a sex session or just during their relationship in general. When do they feel uncomfortable and how do they deal with that? And we look at ways of managing that sort of thing and managing how they feel when they don't know how their partner's feeling and they can't get validation from their partner's incredible interest in sex but or, or in pleasing them. You know, if, mm-hmm. if their partner pleases them, some people think, oh, well, he wants to please me. Therefore, he's amazing. He's He's validating. But on the other hand, if he's terrified and doesn't want to attempt to please you in case he gets it wrong – you're not going to feel validated and neither is he. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and you'll start avoiding sex. Couples that don't look for validation, they can say what they want. They can ask for it. They can be comfortable with people changing their minds about what they want. And they don't look for validation for their sexual behavior. They just try and have a nice time. That's beautiful. That is lovely. Okay. Mm. We might have to do a full episode on self-validation because actually the more i think about it the more i'm like that's all what sex therapy is and we could go for hours and hours talking about that we could. <laughs> for hours and hours this <laughs> next question came through our dms on instagram and this guy asked very politely if he could ask us a question before okay. saying the following my question is a two-parter my partner brackets female and i have been together for nine years now our sex life is pretty typical being open and trying to have sex at least once a week when they say open i think they mean talking to each other not Mm. open she did however approach me recently actually well i might be wrong she did however approach me recently asking if a third could join our bedroom a longtime friend of hers it would mainly be play between them with me present as the other girl isn't really into men any advice on how to respond to this am i wrong to expect or want some interaction with the third Question number two, I also have self-body issues being in showing my body with new people, mainly because I'm uncircumcised. I've gotten bullied and rejected from it in the past, so I have some nerves in the idea. I wonder why I wonder why being uncircumcised is a problem. I think this person is from North America. That's what I could ascertain from right. their right. just their name, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, I won't say any more about their name. Um mm. yeah. so so I would always say if somebody has told you that they don't want to do something or something's not going to happen, if this girl that's going to be involved in this threesome is not into men and does not want to have sex with him, he should just forget about having sex with her. It's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And they need a lot more a lot more discussion about between the three of them about how this is going to work and a lot more mm. boundaries around it. Um, you know, and what's going to happen afterwards? Are they going to do it again? Will they never speak to one another again? Will will her relationship with her friend change? Will they mm. get want to go and have more sex? Yes. I mean, there's an awful lot going on here. Very important point. Uh, there, there's so much going on here. I mean, obviously, you can't say, well, I've got, you know, if, if this person isn't into you and doesn't want to have sex with you, you can't be like, yeah, but like, I'm in this threesome as well. We have to. However, I also think it's kind of like, well, okay, well, then what am I getting out of this threesome then? I get to, yeah, I get to watch my girlfriend and, and her friend of many years have sex. Mm. But is this not a, another case of fetishizing girls and in same sex relationships and same sex? It's like the idea that it's like, well, you should be happy because you get to watch two girls shack. So you should be fine. Yeah, Whereas- but an awful lot of girls are asked to have sex with another man when they that's never even crossed their mind. And their partner says, if you love me, you do it and things like that. So they are persuaded. Really? So I don't, you know, I think it's the same either way. But I think 
the, the thing is that what they, these girls are doing is I think they're saying, we want to have sex. We're telling you about it so you know what we're doing. And we're offering you the opportunity to watch if you want to. But yeah. if you don't want to, we're going to do it anyway. Well. Potentially. That's a bit of well, uh, steady on because that is the big worry. That, I've unfortunately, gone further I mean, than, the, than, the, than they said, I think. But but you, you have. But I do think that's quite an, an interesting point here that I think is something to definitely bear in mind because it it sounds as though... It's not like, oh, we want to have a threesome, we want to have him involved. Because you don't really. It's not like, oh, what we find hot is if we had sex and he watched. I think they're thinking, we want to have sex, like you said, and he we kind of have to include him because if we don't, then it's nefarious. But they have told him. I mean, they're being honest about what they're doing. So Does he have... What should he do if he doesn't want to have sex without it and just watch? If or, he doesn't want that- to just watch, then he can't be there, can he, when they have sex? But what if he doesn't want them to have sex then? Well, I think they need to have a conversation about what's going to happen if that's the case, because it may be that she has that she is very strongly attracted to other women and she is going to want to experience sex with them. I mean, this might just be something that she wants to do once with her friend that they've always talked about and thought about and then she'll never do it again. Mm. But it's much more likely, isn't it, that she's attracted to women and that she will want to do it more than once. And this happens in relationships. And if it does, then you have to find a way of accommodating it. Some people can't and the relationship ends. And other people say, well, that's that's fine. Now, I'm not to not to toot our own horn yet again, but I'd like to refer people if they're interested in this and listen to more things about it. Our episode with Jack Barry a few episodes ago, mm-hmm. where his partner said that they wanted to have sex with women, and yeah. he was very up for that. We yeah. also obviously had the hot wifing episode, yeah. which is something similar, where this guy's wife wanted to have sex with other men, and they sort of incorporated in their sex lives. Mm-hmm. Those are two positive stories about this. Mm-hmm. I would understand if this person is written in doesn't feel so positive about this. It does feel to me. Like maybe it's a decision that's been made. They've incorporated him, but really he doesn't need to be there. He doesn't, you know. But this this yeah. person does sound as though he's thinking, okay, they've asked me to do something, so therefore they've got to pay me back for doing it. So he's not thinking about the implications for the relationship or his girlfriend's needs or what effect this could possibly have on him. He's not really giving it proper consideration. He's just saying, hey, let's ask a third party if they think this is fair, because I don't think it's fair, because I want to get something out of it. I want to shag this other girl. But I don't think that's... Do uh, you know... Oh God, maybe I'm being a dick here, but she has said, I want to have sex with my friend mm-hmm. and we'll have a threesome, right? What she's getting out of that is having sex with her friend. He goes, oh, they've invited me to this threesome in which I can't do what she's doing, which is basically having sex with a third party there. Well, I guess I'm not getting what I wanted out of this situation. Why would I have the threesome? To have sex with someone else. It's a threesome. Unfortunately, that's been denied for me. And thus, I don't think I want to do the threesome. Well, that's all right, isn't it? If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't have to. But I think he could ask her a whole lot more questions about whether she identifies as bisexual or gay or Mm. just curious or whether she's ever had sex with a woman before or, Mm. you know, whether, you know, how she feels about him long term, how she thinks this will pan out. What, What will it do to their relationship afterwards? I mean, I'd want to be asking serious questions like mm, that, not mm. can I have a feel of your friend? Sorry, yes, of course. He can't have sex with this person because she doesn't want to have sex with him and that's a consent issue. But I think he's thinking, well, if we're going to have a threesome, I'd like us to both have sex with a third party. And in this current state of a threesome, we're not going to be both having sex with a third party. Only you are and I don't want to do it. I, I so I, So when I say he's like, oh, do you mind, you know, I should be asking about this. I think, obviously, he can't have sex with this other person. Obviously not, because she doesn't want to have sex with him. Consent issue, blah, blah, blah. But I think what he's asking by this is, maybe I'm saying, maybe that's not true, but I think what he's asking is, can I go back to my girlfriend and say, uh, if we're going to have a threesome, shouldn't we both be having sex with a third party? Let's, If we want to do a threesome so bad, let's tr- go out and find someone that's had sex with us both. Wouldn't that be fun? That sort of thing. And if she says no to that, then so be it. And if, and if that's... And if, but if she's like, no, I just want to have sex with this person, you watch, take it or leave it. And he says no, then Well, he might so say that, it. Or, he might, or it might end the relationship. But it might that's end the I mean. relationship yeah, yeah. if he pushes this and says, well, what about me? What about me? What about me? What's he missing out on? 
Oh, he's missing out on somebody else. Having sex with somebody else, well, yeah. He, well, you know, he sounds like the kind of person that might go off and have sex with someone else anyway, just to just Why to do you think that? Point. That is such a stretch. That is such a stretch. They've been going out for nine years, and, and by all means, they've been faithful to each other for nine, nine years. years. I mean... you For some reason, you hate this guy straight away. <laughs> And I, and I, and because I, I just I, don't see why he's saying it's not fair. Can't he be a grown up? But because she's having sex with someone else, and he doesn't, he doesn't get to. But he can have sex with her. He's still getting sex. Well, she can have sex with him. She's still getting sex. Yeah, but she's got this interest in women. So does he? Oh, uh, right. I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling an end to this because I, I'm, ju- uh, this is, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry, you're just not listening. I don't want to hear is it fair, ever. I don't want to hear is it fair, ever, no. ever, ever. Because it isn't about that. It's about people's needs and people's interests and about how much you care about someone and about finding out what's actually going on. It is not about tit for tat. There is nothing, nothing aimed to break up a, a, a relationship quicker than someone saying it's not fair. That's yeah. all. To be fair, I do think you're right. I think basically... If this is a new thing for her and she wants to try being with a woman um, and she wants you there, then that's cool and fine. You need to ask her about that and see if that is what's going on here, whether this is, you know, this isn't this isn't about the threesome. This is about what she wants to try and, and who she wants to be and, like you said before, needs and wants and that sort of thing and her desires. It's not about the threesome. It's about her new exploration. If you're not comfortable with that, then, then so be it. But I wonder whether you're not comfortable with that because... You're worried that since they're such good friends and this might not not be a one-time thing and this isn't about the threesome, this is about this new thing, which is either new for her being in a same-sex situation or new because she wants to have sex with her friend. Again, you need to talk to her about this and work out, is that what's going on? And if that's a red line for you, then, you know, maybe that could spell the end of the day she like said before. Um, just to say as well, on point number two, I have self-body issues about, about showing my body to new people because I'm uncircumcised. Mm. I've gotten bullied and rejected in the past. I'm very sad to hear that. I'm really sorry to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I'm very sad to hear that. I think you should maybe consider EMDR. And that is a type of therapy. For a type of therapy to deal with trauma because this sounds yeah. as if it was quite traumatic. If it makes you feel any better, in the UK, pretty much, well, a load of people are uncircumcised. Yeah, come over and- here. You'll be Come in over good here, company. mate. <laughs> You'll be in great company. No one will, no one will bat an eyelid. You're you're absolutely fine. And it's just, and obviously, it's easy for me to say, but I just feel like whoever whoever is giving you shit for that in the past is a dick. Mm. And um, talk about self validation earlier. Some self validation, mate. You're good. Maybe I won't say great because we've cast some aspersions on your character. Okay. Oh, guy. Sorry, mate. Yeah, sorry, mate. Right. Well, that's it. Um, we've come to the end of this episode, and this series oh no 20 episodes how crazy is that wow well we'll have to come back and do it all again i think mm. uh, very soon so make sure you're following us uh, wherever you listen to this now mm-hmm. so you're notified when we drop the new series follow us on instagram at real sex pod so we'll tell you uh, and also tell us what you want to hear about next series we'll talk about mm. anything and also obviously keep your questions coming in so at real sex pod on instagram and also on email where podcast at hatch.com uh, a huge thank you to Hattrick and Claire in particular mm-hmm. you're still the best we love you very much yeah, thank do. you very much to all our brilliant guests this series and thank you mum for being wonderful as ever you're great well thank you Diggs for all your hard work a huge thank you to all of you for listening that is the biggest thank you today because honestly we love doing this podcast so you know it, it makes it possible for us if you enjoy this podcast at all please give it a rating or review wherever you listen to it and also the best thing you can do is tell just one friend preferably lots but if you tell one friend tell a hundred tell, yeah on, exactly tell a hundred <laughs> just post it on facebook you've got Yay. loads of friends on there and yeah and that really helps us out and lastly we'd like to dedicate this series to two of the guests of ours we've had mm. on previous episodes uh, david stewart and dr thaddeus burchard who unfortunately passed away since we were recording this series they were both wonderful people and they made the world a better place so this series is for them yeah Thanks again, everyone, and we will catch you on the next series for some more real sex education. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Real Sex Education, which is hosted by Diggory Waite and Kate Campbell. The show is produced by Diggory Waite, and the executive producer is Claire Broughton. The Real Sex Education is a hat-trick podcast. 
This podcast is based on the real-life relationship between Diggory Waite and his mother, accredited sex therapist Kate Campbell. The show is therefore inspired by, but otherwise unrelated to, the TV show Sex Education. But yes, Diggory does wish his mother was played by Gillian Anderson. 